this is one of those times where I totally understand where the athlete comes from, and at the same time, I kind of just wish I would see more. So what do we make of the news that Jalen Weidemeyer is going pro, and where does he best fit at the NFL level? You are Locked On Aggies, your daily podcast on the Texas A&M Aggies. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Howdy, everybody, and welcome back into another episode of Locked On Aggies presented by the Locked On Podcast Network. Cole Thompson back here in the driver's seat talking all things Texas A&M. And today, why don't we take a look at the departure of Jalen Weidemeyer, what this means for Texas A&M, the program, the future, and so much more that goes along with this. Thank you so much for making us your first listen every single day. Check us out on iTunes, Spotify, YouTube.com, and of course, the Locked On Podcast Network at LockedOnPodcast.com. This episode of Locked On Aggies is brought to you by Sonos, the official sponsor of college football. To go find out more about Sonos, visit them at sonos.com slash locked on NCAA. As always, I am Cole Thompson. I am the host of the show. Name right down there below on Twitter, at Mr. Cole Thompson. And I love public feedback. So anything you can do to make this a more quality sounding podcast, Monday through Friday, give me a follow, give me a shout out, and I will add it into the mix. Secondly, Locked on Aggies. Locked on Aggies is your number one source for all things 12 May related content found here on LLP. You can subscribe on iTunes, listen on Spotify, and if you can't do any of that, listen live every single day, every single day at LockedOnPodcast.com. So why don't we go ahead and break down the big time news. Jalen Weidemeyer, potentially the number one tight end in the 2022 NFL draft class, is headed to the pros. He made the announcement on Monday afternoon saying that his time in Aggie Lane was up. And ever since he arrived in College Station, he had been welcomed in by the community, loved his time here, leaves AM as a legacy guy that made an immediate impact from Jalen Weidemeyer since he arrived out of Texas is nothing short of impressive. The way that he was able to improve as an inline blocker, the way that he was able to utilize his speed to his agility, his size, his frame, his footwork, all these little things that definitely are needed at the next level, he possessed during his time at College Station. And slowly but surely, he's emerged as potentially the greatest tight end that Texas ever seen. I mean, he holds one of the top 10 receiving aspects in general, not just top receiving tight end, just top receiver in general to be ranked in the top 10 in receiving touchdowns with 16 during his three years at Texas A&M. This is a big loss for the Aggies in the long term because if you don't really know what you have outside of Jalen Weidemeyer, and that's not an insult. There's a lot of good talent coming in and a lot, a lot of good talent coming in, especially a guy coming out of the same town in Donovan Green. But to lose a guy like Jalen Weidemeyer is a little bit of a blank because the main reason behind it, I look at what Weidemeyer brings to the table. And the biggest thing that I take away is his versatility. You have a guy who can run short intermediate routes. You have a guy who can be that safety net and security blanket across the middle of the field. You have that guy who can be in the short flat situation, utilize his speed, his agility, his awareness, his physical presence, all these little aspects that really will help bode well for the passing game, especially on third and short, especially on second and uh, second down situational plays. And he was a reliable pass catcher. But the biggest thing that I took away was over the last two years, you kind of saw him take a little bit of a step back. Not that he wasn't a good receiver. He was a very talented receiver. But you really saw him become a better blocker. And to me, what NFL teams are probably seeing is this is a well-rounded tight end. And you start to see nowadays more than ever, there's situational tight ends in the NFL. This is the case for any single sport. There's situational across the board. You sometimes will have flex tight ends. Sometimes you will only have blocking tight ends. Sometimes you will have the three down tight end, the guy who can play in the block, can play as a receiving aspect. A lot of teams run, run love to run a lot of 12-man personnel down. So you get to see a little bit more of him being an inline blocker. He's improving in that aspect, but you can also line him up in the flex. There's a couple tight ends that I've talked around the NFL draft circles with. I reached out to a couple scouts when the news broke yesterday morning or yesterday afternoon that he was going to go pro. And the consensus was he's probably the number two or number three tight end. Nobody is going to deny that Trey McBride or other state. And if you watch the film, you got to remember that a lot of times when you're going into NFL draft circles and NFL draft combines, the player with the hot hand usually is the 
the way a little bit more of their name recognized. McBride this past year was arguably the best tight end in college football. He was the John Mackey Award winner for a good reason. He brought him to a fantastic job after the catch. I think he averaged like 14.8 yards per play or something like that. Really nice job out in Fort Collins. I don't know if he will be the best tight end out of this group. I personally love the upside of what I saw from Weidemeyer, and I have always loved Charlie Kohler coming out of Iowa State. I think that both of them are probably more of what I'd be looking for, but McBride right now is probably going to get the most reps, and keep in mind that because of, as of today, he has not been invited to the Senior Bowl. Trey McBride is probably the top tight end who's going to get an extra bit of reps in because he's going to be at the Senior Bowl with the like of Mobile, with several other people, with um, you know, with NFL teams, with all 32 scouts there. That does play a factor. I mean, I go to the Senior Bowl almost every single year that I get the opportunity to. And the biggest thing that I take away is that the talent that's there has an opportunity to boost their stock more than ever. A guy like Jalen Weidemeyer has to hope that a good combine, good pro day, good measurables, good interview process kind of gets him up there. But I talked to a couple scouts. The consensus is he's about a top 50 player. I, I have not seen many people put him below about 40 big boards. The highest I've seen him be is about 26, 25. A couple of uh, big boards have him right around that top 30 range. But the consensus is he's about a top 50 player. Uh, there's a, I would probably put him probably more so in that top 35, top 40 range. Really low-end first-round pick for teams needing that extra pass catcher. Really good solidified pick at the start of round two. He is where you really find your role players and your playmakers. So this is not an insult to guys who are going to go first round. I know that if he declares Kenyon Green will be a first-round target. I know DeMarvin Leal is going to be a top-ten pick. Talk to a lot of scouts about him. They love his upside. They love his potential. They love his ability to be a read-and-react versatile player both in the uh, both inside as a three-technique Outside as a five technique, you can play him in both a 3-4 and a 4-3 formation. But a guy like Weidemeyer may actually be a little bit of a better fit for teams because he does the same thing and has that versatility to where I do think that you will see him be in the running for tight end number one. If not tight end number one, he's absolutely going to be number tight end number two. But the big question is, where does he go? What is the best fit for him? We'll talk about that next. But before we do any of that, this episode of Locked on Aggies, well, it's brought to you by NetSuite. If you don't know what NetSuite is, it is the can't-miss generational product that you need on your shelves every single day. It is definitely used for your status as working in this industry of trying to build a financial system, building your status up to the highest level of standards and when you look at what they do, over 28,000 businesses already use NetSuite. From the, new year, uh, from the new year, NetSuite has a new financing program that will help you upgrade your system at netsuite.com slash locked, L-O-C-K-E-D, netsuite.com slash locked for a special one-of-a-kind lifetime financial offer, number one financial system in growing business. NetSuite is everything you can want and so much more in one place. 93% of surveyed businesses have increased their section go on slash locked for more information locked on any specific the locked on podcast network as i do thank you so much for making us your first listen every single day check us out on itunes spotify youtube.com and of course locked on podcast.com make us sure that you're following us on social media make sure you're following me on social media at mr cole thompson subscribe to the youtube channel we are growing daily i love seeing the growth that you guys are giving me keep it coming in keep giving me feedback i love seeing that now Back to my main point, the three teams that I think most could utilize a guy like Jalen Weinemeyer and where he kind of falls. Let's start off with, in my opinion, the number one, I mean, the number three team, that kind of like floor ceiling. This would be about a mid-second round pick. I look at a team like the Minnesota Vikings. I don't know what they have with Irv Smith. Guy gets injured way too much. Guy has not been able to stay on the field. He never was able to take over that number one role for Kyle Rudolph last year, and they need an extra playmaker. I don't know if they'll go Kellen Mon next year. I don't know if they'll go Kirk Cousins. I don't know if they'll draft a guy like a Kenny Pickett or a Desmond Ritter. They may do a bunch of different things, but they have got to have another pass catcher. I think when you look at how the offensive line has been playing as of late, they're really against the run. They have some struggles against the pass. From, especially a guy like Christian Darisaw. He's slowly coming back. Uh, got his butt whooped against Robert Quinn on Monday Night Football. I mean, absolutely. But I do look at this team. I do look at this roster. I think that the tight end position is one that could be utilized, especially on third down. That's where Kirk Cousins has had his inconsistencies. That's where I think Kellen Mond is going to thrive if he is the starter in 2022. So to add him to the mix, 
I think that'd be a really good location. He plays more of that three down tight end, what Kyle Rudolph played. So if you want to also keep Irv Smith Jr., who will be going into a contract year in 2022, it's a good deal because here's why. You'll have time to figure out what you want to do. And Smith can play that flex role, very similar to what you saw with Evan Ingram during his time with the New York Giants. Play him as a standing wide technique, have him be a little bit more flexed out, have him be utilizing that aspect. Short passes go to Weidemeyer on third down, keeping the chains moving. He's really good in blocking, and this is a team that does know how to run the football. He comes from a running team. Uh, Dalvin Cook, Alexander Madison, they have good running backs. They're probably going to get a oh, go at another one, especially if you do start Kirk Cousins next year, because the last thing you want to do is have him throw horrendous interceptions left and right, have him go with the short to intermediate passes. That, to me, is like the floor. Somewhere in middle round two, probably about a top 50 selection. I don't see him going there. There's going to be several who be interested, but the Minnesota Vikings, I feel like they're a team that has Justin Jefferson, Adam Thielen, Dalvin Cook, Alexander Madison. They have a good roster. They just need that extra playmaker, and I don't know what you do about Kirk Cousins, but if you're going to keep him back, give him as many playmakers as possible, this feels like a really nice fit. And I also said that I thought the best fit for the likes of DeMarvin Leal was the Minnesota Vikings. So, you can very well see two 12th men be going up to the land of 10,000 likes, and it could be a big show. Number two, and this is probably the one that I feel the most confident is going to address this position. I don't know where, I don't know when, but I feel like they're 100% going to. To me, the Jacksonville Jaguars are a team that needs a tight end. They absolutely do. You have a young quarterback in Trevor Lawrence, and the last thing you want to do is put your young quarterback in a position to where he has to go deep downfield because he does not have that security blanket. It would be a really, really, really nice fit for him to be able to be that guy. For him to be that guy on third and short, for him to be that guy on first and ten, a little bit across the middle of the field, quick slant routes, quick hits, go use his body after the catch, really physical. And again, this is a team that does have a good running back in James Robinson, but they need that extra push up front. A lot of different needs on this offseason. They're going to go ahead and a pass rusher, I think. They're going to go ahead and defensive line. They have to because if you have a generational quarterback in Trevor Lawrence out in Duval County, you have to be able to give him as much potential to succeed as possible. So adding in a tight end, really, really good tight end that can do a little bit of everything. Play run, play the pass, uh, be good at the opening left and right. There's a lot to like about a guy like Jalen Weinemeyer in this system. And the biggest thing you got to take away is we don't know who's going to be the offensive coordinator next year. We don't know who's going to be the head coach next year. We don't know what direction this team is going in next year, how close they're going to be to contending. I view this as a luxury pick. They have a few of these in the draft over the next two years. They're probably going to be picking very early on. So they're probably be picking somewhere like pick 34, 35, 36. That to me feels like the perfect window Weidemeyer, really high end at the start of round number two, probably adding in for 12-man personnel. Give him time, give him luxury, but then as well, make sure he's on a team where he can absolutely thrive very early on. Jacksonville does not have a good tight end situation. They need it for Trevor Lawrence. They need it for somebody who can work the middle of the field. To me, this feels like a team that is just this close, so much ready to go ahead and make an impact. I think that as soon as you get the right personnel in there, I think a guy like Weidemeyer would flourish, especially working with a young up-and-coming quarterback like Trevor Lawrence. But the number one spot, this is the most important one, and it's not because of I think that he's a great fit there. I think that it's a good overall place for him in the long term because you look at what they really need and to me, it is a tight end. It is receiving help. They're probably going to go ahead and dress it uh, with another wide receiver this offseason. But I really think the New York Jets is the best fit. I do. Weidemeyer, to me, fits what New York needs the most. They need somebody who can help out in the run blocking, but they need somebody who can be really effective in the red zone. That is where Jalen Weidemeyer is at his best. When he's playing near the red zone, inside the 15, inside the 10-yard line, short passes, allowing him to bully linebackers, allowing him to play those nickel defenders down low, have that one-on-one -on -one matchup ability that allows him to win, get into the end zone, get those points. That's what Zach Wilson's missing because you watch right now when they're in the red zone, the New York Jets, Zach Wilson's not passing the football. He's running it in himself. The reason he's running it in 
because he thinks that he's a terrible quarterback or anything along those lines. It's more so because of they don't have a lot of weapons. They do not have a lot going for them. The tight end position is abysmal right now. Their defense, they, I think, at least address several needs this offseason, getting guys like Carl Lawson to come in. Uh, they got a linebacker to come in. They got a nickel defender. I think that all these guys are going to get another year to kind of prove themselves once again. But someone to me, like Jalen Weidemeyer, paired up with Corey Davis, paired up with whoever they draft next year's class, Elijah Moore, a speedy, sticky slot receiver who can do a little bit of everything, that gives you some stability. That gives you some stability at a very big area of need, which is red zone efficiency. This is one of the worst red zone offenses in the NFL right now. They need a big-time prime target. This, to me, is about where I'm hearing his ranges, about 36 39 40 range the Jets they're sitting with three wins on the year probably the best that they're going to do is somewhere in that I would say no more than 40 that to me is about the ceiling like right around that 35 40 is like that really prime fresh area for a guy like Jalen Weidemeyer to go that to me feels like the best fit you get a guy who's going to be a red zone efficient target you get a guy who's going to make an immediate impact on this roster and he's going to help out a young quarterback flourish in an area where he has already flourished at the collegiate level. Let's see what he can do with the pro. The New York Jets really do feel like the Jalen Weidemeyer. And I've talked to a few New York Jets fans out there. They very much would like to see a tight end of his size, of his caliber, be able to come in and make an immediate impact. This episode of Locked On Aggies is brought to you by Prize Picks. All right, listen up, college football fantasy nerds. Have I got a deal for you? Prize Picks is the leader in college football daily sports fantasy. It offers more college football and basketball props than anywhere else in the world. And they offer everything from five star players at the Power Five level to mid level talent. You can go ahead and bet on anything in basketball assists, rebounds, threes made, uh, penalties made, in football, interceptions thrown, rushing yards. All you got to do is use the promo code Locked On and you will get up to a 100% welcome bonus. Bonus with your first deposit. So you bet 20 bucks, you get 20 bucks. You bet 100 bucks, you get 100 bucks. Choose two to five players, take the over under projections, go ahead and use the award winning app on both the Apple Store and on Google Play. Entries can be made in 60 seconds or less. It's that easy. Price Picks is safe and it offers fast withdrawals for you. Don't hesitate. Check out pricepicks.com. Use the promo code locked on and get into the action today. Stop sitting on the sidelines. Go ahead and earn some extra moolah this offseason in fantasy sports made easy with prize picks. Locked on Aggies presented by the Locked on Podcast Network. Thank you so much for making us your first listen every single day. Now make sure you tune in this holiday season for the Locked on College Football Preview Show. Expert analysis around the country, uh, experts from across talking all things about the college football playoff, major bowl games, all that and much, much more. We'll be discussing all that. Make sure you tune in starting this upcoming week. All right, so what does Texas A&M do at tight end in the immediate future? Well, the first thing you got to do is see what you got with Baylor Cup. Baylor Cup was one of the highest graded tight ends in the history of the sport. I mean, you go look at his numbers on 24-7. You go look at his numbers on SI99. You go look at his numbers on Rivals. He was one of the highest ranked tight ends you have ever seen play the position. So the first thing you got to do is see what he can do now that he's had two season-ending injuries. Can he be that guy, your leader in the locker room? And if that's the case, great. That's going to be your number one over for Jalen Weinemeyer in 2022. Now, if he can't do that, see what else you got in the roster. Max Wright, Blake Smith, Eli Stowers has been playing tight end. See what he can be as a vertical option. See if he can be effective on third down. And then after that, then you start looking at your tight ends that you already have in next year. You've got three tight ends, all of whom were ranked Top 10 tight ends on most big boards. Uh, you have the sweetest guy. I'm blanking on his name. Old, Old Strum, I know is his last name. Uh, you have Donovan Green. And then, of course, you have Jake Johnson, which was the big surprise of National Signing Day or early signing period because a lot of people thought that he was going to go to LSU, not just because of who they brought in, but because of his brother, Max Johnson. When Max Geek committed and said he would enter the transfer portal after two years of being the starter for the LSU Tigers, year and a half, year and a half, whatever you want to say, the second, that, the second that he entered, Jake did commit. Now he's coming in. Many people across the country that I've spoken to believe he is the top tight end prospect in this class. So if he is one of the best guys and one of the immediate factors, you could see him have that same effect that you saw with Jalen Weidemeyer in 2019. Donovan Green, who hails from Dickinson, 
Another school where, you guessed it, Jalen Weidemeyer came from, is a really good route runner. He is a very good inline blocker. I feel like his upside is more of a blocker, a really good on red zone. And a and a lot of 12-man personnel. The one thing that Jimbo Fisher has talked about a lot is running a 12-man personnel. But you have to have the right personnel to run it. So a guy like Baylor Cup maybe does not offer a lot in blocking. But maybe a guy like Donovan Green does. Maybe a guy like Jake Johnson does. This is where you start to figure out who's going to be your tight end number one. You're well-rounded. The guy who plays immediately does a little bit of everything, both as a blocker, both as a pass catcher. And who's going to be that guy? That guy that comes in for blocking formations, that guy that comes in on third and short, fourth down, you're all blocking out. You have your tight end kind of just shoot over the top on a seam route. Quarterback hits him in stride. Go ahead and get like 30-plus yards down the field. If you didn't see that, go watch the UTEP game against – um. Who was UTEP playing in the bowl game? Either way, UTEP was playing in a bowl game. Go watch that play. Really nice run design. They run a 13-man personnel, three tight end formation, all down low. Both tight ends kind of close the gap. One run up the scene, immediate touchdown, big time play. Everyone's excited. You would now have that ability to do so because you have three really good young up-and-coming tight ends on the roster, plus you have Baylor Cup. Now, again, for the bowl game, you have to see what you got with Baylor Cup. This is a guy who was highly regarded coming out of high school. He was expected to make an immediate impact. Two season-ending injuries cost him. I want to see what his upside is, what he brings to my table, what he brings every single snap. And if he can do stuff at the highest level, well then, in my personal opinion, he's going to be the guy that you got to beat. But afterwards, if he can't do that, you got to hope that these young up-and-coming freshmen that are coming in, Donovan Green, Holstrom, uh, um, Jake Johnson, you have to hope that these are guys that can be immediate contributors in the passing game because whether it's Max Johnson starting, Haynes King, Connor Wangman, it doesn't really matter. Whoever starts for Texas A&M in 2022, they're going to rely heavily on the tight end. I promise you that. So one of these four names that I just mentioned have got to step up right away and make that immediate impact. That's going to do it for this edition of Locked on Aggies. Make sure you're following us on social media at Mr. Cole Thompson and at Locked on Aggies. On tomorrow's show, we've heard the news. It started coming out. What to make of Texas A&M's COVID outbreak? What else is there to know moving forward? What have we heard? We'll talk about that and much, much more. See you then. And remember, give me all.